multiple choice. Um, I'm right, second half of the 2018 past paper multiple choice. Um, I'm starting off by saying I did not like this first question on this section. Okay, right, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen can be converted into water in a mixture of hydrocarbons. I just hope I can explain this well. I've got lots of scribbles. Okay, so NCO plus 2N plus 1H2 goes to NH2O plus hydrocarbons. What is the general formula for the hydrocarbons produced? So I'm looking for what this bit is, my C what to H what. And I know it's been given various options and I've actually been told it's CN and then I'm looking for my H. So, so what I did to help me, okay, so I started off by saying, right, I've already got, I know that my NC is fine and I know that my NO is fine because this is over here, right? So what I've got to work around is my hydrogens. So 2N plus 1 H2, I'm going to multiply out that bracket, okay? Which means that I have 2N H2 plus an H2. Still following, hopefully. Okay, right. Like, just so I could see this better, what I did was split this up a little bit. So I said what I've actually got here is an NH2 plus an NH2 plus an H2. Okay, so just so I could split this up. Now, the reason I did that is because if I look at the equation, I've already used up an NH2. So I'm getting rid of that. And that means this is the remaining stuff which is inside the hydrocarbon. Okay, now the thing is that hydrocarbons don't give it as H2. Okay, hydrocarbons in general formulas, we're just looking at H. So to make my life, again, slightly easier, I converted this. So my NH, my NH2 is actually the same as saying I have two NHs and I have two Hs. I, it's not proper nomenclature in some ways, but it's right for what you're going to have to use it for, which means in terms of Hs, I have 2N plus 2. And I had CN, which means the answer is D. I really hope that makes sense. I have scribbled multiple times to try and make that clear. Okay, question 12. A mixture of sodium chloride and sodium sulphate is known to contain 0.6 moles of chloride ions and 0.2 moles of sulphate. How many moles of sodium ions are present? Given the last question, I thought this was a gift. Okay, so sodium chloride is, we clear, just to have you valency crossover if we need to, is NaCl, okay? And we are told that you have 0.6 moles of the chloride. Now, so for every chloride you have an, a sodium, so I must have 0.6 moles of sodium, right? We then have, uh, we're going sodium sulphate. So Na, again with the one, sorry, my mouse is getting in the way. And sulphate, SO4, that's a two minus. So here's my formula. Na2SO4, it tells me that I have 0.2 moles of the sulphate. Now, if I have 0.2 moles of this, I have 0.4 moles of the sodium because this is a 1 to 2 inside the, the formula. Okay, add these two together and I get 1 mole of sodium ions, and that's what the question is asking me to figure out. It's a very common type of question, you work it the same way every time. Okay, question 13. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, which of the following gases would occupy the largest volume? Okay, so we are looking for you to use the definition that you know, which is that at the same temperature and pressure, all gases have the same molar volume. So that means if I'm looking for the largest volume, I need the most moles. And then it's just a bit of just working it through. And it's not too difficult because they're being reasonably nice with the numbers. Okay, so my moles of hydrogen... Moles is mass divided by formula mass. I'm only going to write that once. Okay, so 0 0.2 divided by 2. So 5. Oh, no, I've done something wrong here. Where are we going? 0 0.2 divided by... Yes, sorry. 0 0.1. I have done something strange in my note. Never mind. Okay, right, so 0 0.1. Uh, my moles of carbon dioxide... Um, is going to be 0.44 divided by 44 because formula mass of this 
it's one that you use so often that I would expect you almost to know it, but you know, always do the calculation in the exam because you don't touch, trust your brain. Okay, so 0 0.01. Um, our formula for neon is just our mass of neon. Um, sorry, is just the formula. So 0 0.6 divided by 20.2, so 0 0.03. And finally for argon, we've got 0 0.8 divided by 0. No, 39.9, which is 0 0.02. So by quite a way, hydrogen. Question 14. What volume of gas in centimetres cubed would be obtained by a reaction between 100 centimetres cubed of ammonia and excess copper 2 oxide? All volumes are measured at atmospheric pressure and 20 degrees C. OK, right. So you're told you've got excess of this. Um, but this is going to be a solid, so that's got nothing to do with what you finally do. You're told that this has fully reacted, because if the copper oxide is in excess, then the ammonia must be reacted, all of it. And even though that was a gas, that's therefore not going to have anything to do with the final thing. Copper will be a solid, so nothing to do with that. And water at 20 degrees C is a liquid, so nothing to do with that. So just, we're only looking at one thing, okay? And since we're looking at gases, uh, we can treat volumes as moles, effectively. So we've got 2NH3 goes to N2. That's a 2 to 1. That was 100 centimetres cubed. That is 50. That's all you had to do. OK. The addition of which the following substances would move the above equilibrium to the right. OK, so we are looking to shift it this way. So I'm either going to have to beef up this side and it will try to push back by shifting out of the way or I need to remove things from the right hand side which it will try to replace because this is all a chatelier. You hit an equilibrium, it will move to minimise that disruption. Okay, right, so what have we got here? We've got hydrogen. We've got hydrogen chloride which is H plus Cl minus. We've got sodium chloride which is Na plus. Cl minus, and we have sodium hydroxide, which is Na plus OH minus. Okay, right. Let's get rid of hydrogen. Hydrogen's got nothing to do with anything. There is no hydrogen in that equation, and it's not going to impact on the equation. So it's got nothing to do with it. Okay, hydrogen chloride. So let's look at what that's doing to this equilibrium. So here's chloride here, and here's hydrogen. So if I dump in this, I'm basically beefing up the right hand side. So what is the equilibrium going to do? It's actually going to try and remove them. So it's going to massively shift to the left wrong way. OK, sodium chloride, same deal. I'm adding in chloride, so it's going to shift it the wrong way. Sodium hydroxide, however, now sodium hydroxide, sodium is not in the equilibrium, so it's got nothing to do with it. Hydroxide is not in the equilibrium either, but hydroxide will react with the hydrogen to reform the water equilibrium. So what it's doing is it's removing the hydrogen ions. So this starts to go down. So the whole equilibrium is being disrupted and it will try to move to replace the problem, which is that we've lost some hydrogen ions from it. So it is going to go this way quite a few, quite a bit more. And so therefore this one is your correct answer. OK, 16. Bit of a gift, frankly. OK, when 3.6 grams of butanol is burned, uh, 124 kilojoules of energy is released. What is the enthalpy of combustion in butanol in kilojoules per mole? And it tells you the mass of one mole is 72 grams. So I'm literally just going to have to do proportion. So 72 divided by 3.6 times by 124. Uh, now, I noted that down somewhere. I can remember it's a factor of 20. But I can't find where I put that. Um, oh, well, factor of 20, so obviously it's, it's these ones here. And it's releasing energy, so therefore exothermic, so it's the C. OK. Question 17. Consider the reaction pathways shown below. According to Hess, the enthalpy change for reaction X is... OK, so instead of going directly along X, you're going to have to go down here and back up here, which means this is fine, but this one you have to flip over. So if you have to flip that, I need to change that sign and then add them up. 
Okay, and so when I do that, I get minus one, one, one. That's it. Okay, question 18. You'll notice I've pulled in a bit from the data book here. Which of the following ions could be used to oxidise sulphite ions to sulphate? Okay, so let's go find that particular equation in here. And here it is. Here's my sulphite to sulphate. And I am going, be absolutely clear, I'm going that way. Okay, right now, so this, this is really a, a right thumb rule thing. So if I want that oxidation to go to the right, um, I need my right thumb, which I would put on top of this one, to be higher than my left thumb. So I need something below it down here. Okay, so let's go find the rest of the things. And here we go. So chromium is up here. Fe3+, plus. here we go. Uh, we've also got a 3 plus here. Okay. Uh, we've got SN4, oh, there we go, and we've also got, we're going aluminium, okay. Right, so at this point, even if you couldn't remember what was going on and what the rule had to be, remember in multiple choice you can only have one right answer, there is only one of them underneath and the rest are all above, so if you had to guess, we could go with this one, okay. But I would like you not to guess. So what we're looking at here is that the oxidation can run because the reduction is below it. Okay, right thumb would be on the SO3 two minus, left thumb would be on the Fe3 plus. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Question 19. During a redox reaction, nitrates converted to nitrogen monoxide. Which line in the table correctly completes the ion electron equation? asking you to do the whole thing and that's not always the case with these ones okay um in the multiple choice right so we don't have to do any balance with the nitrogens they're okay um but we're going to start with our the rest of our rules so remember it's oxygen with water it's a hydrogen with hydrogen ions and then it's charge with electrons okay that's your three steps for all always for this so my first thing is I'm going to have to put in two waters on this side because I have three oxygens on the left and I only have one on the right. Okay, now I've got four hydrogens on the right, so let's put four hydrogens on the left. Okay, my charge now, this charge is now sitting at three plus. This charge is zero, so I need to balance this off. So I'm going to put three electrons in here because that's going to give me three pluses, three minuses which gives me zero and that's zero. Okay, so in the reactant side, I need to have four hydrogen ions and three electrons. And in the products, I need to have two waters. Okay, that's it. Last question in the multiple choice. Okay, which line in the table identifies correctly the changes that will cause the greatest increase in the proportion of solid in the above equilibrium mixture? So here's my solid. So I'm basically asking which favours the right forward reaction. Okay, um, so temperature. So look at this temperature here, we have got a negative. Okay, so we have an exothermic reaction. So what I'm looking for is something which would favour an exothermic reaction. Favouring exothermic would be if I cooled it down, because the more I cool it down, the more it's going to try and deal with the fact that you've cooled it by increasing the heat. So a temperature decrease will favour the exothermic. Okay, so we're down to two. And then we're looking at pressure. Pressure, the only thing pressure's really dealing with is this chlorine gas. So if I squeeze that, increase the pressure, it's going to try and get rid of the gas. So that's what we're looking for. If I decrease the pressure, it would have tried to replace gas, so it would have gone the wrong way. So correct answer is B. And that's the end of that year's multiple choice.